When I was in Eritrea, I worked for the state-run uh, TV station. I was the anchor woman for the English news department. I worked there for uh, over two years, and uh, it was part of my civil service duties, which is uh, part of the system. Good evening and welcome to tonight's News to Viewers. But first, let's take a look at the major headlines. My name tonight. is Salim Solomon. I am an Eritrean. I came from Eritrea, which is an East African country in the Horn of Africa. Uh, I came here a year ago, uh, in July 2007. I was born and raised in Ethiopia, uh, but I moved to Eritrea in 1998 uh, because of the border conflict between the two countries. So this uh, short documentary that I'm doing right now uh, started with a little project that uh, I went to shoot at, uh, in St. Louis. And um, I thought it was a great opportunity to come up with a short documentary to uh, show and tell uh, the history of the independence of my country. Eritreans residing abroad celebrate their Independence Day May 24th with mixed feelings because of the current political situation in the country. Eritrea, located on the Horn of Africa, is Africa's youngest country, bordering Ethiopia, Djibouti, and Sudan. The recent 17th anniversary of independence serves as an important reminder of the prolonged struggle for statehood. <laughs> Freedom is very expensive. Freedom takes so many uh, uh, resources and what the resource we gave is human life. For me, today I'm celebrating the friends I grew up in Karen, the friends I, I knew in, uh, in Asmara, including so many of them who died today and who gave us the freedom to live in a free Eritrea. That means a lot to me. I'm remembering those who gave their lives. I'm grateful for those who worked hard and gave their, uh, they shed their blood for the independence. And uh, I'm grateful for the people who were behind the struggle to make the country uh, a nation to be today. Since the 1800s, Eritreans have shrugged off a host of foreign occupiers, including the Italians, the British, and the Ethiopians. In the 1950s, the international community, particularly the United States and the United Nations, falsely promised Eritreans a chance to vote for independence after spending a decade in federation with Ethiopia. When Ethiopia annexed Eritrea by force, the desire for freedom was so strong, it led to a 30-year armed conflict, which eventually created the modern state. It's a struggle that has forged the national character, which prides itself on an unwillingness to surrender. In Tigrinya, the native language, it is known as Kalsi Weladotat, or the struggle of generations. The irrepressibility is combined with a fierce pride in the national achievement. Though the international community recognizes May 24, 1993 as the date of independence, Eritreans universally hold that liberation occurred two years earlier with the defeat of Ethiopian troops.
The problem, however, is that the struggle did not end with independence. Most Eritrean exiles have bittersweet feelings about the political situation in the country. After independence in 1998, just the Ethiopian government, just the Wayane uh, junta, try to uh, try to take some parts of Eritrea. Just they start the war, they ignite the war in 1998. Since then, just we fought a very nonsense war, a very bloody war that many youngsters. Uh, a border conflict with its neighbor Ethiopia erupted in the late 1990s and has halted all trade between the two nations and further isolated Eritrea. The three-year border conflict with Ethiopia claimed more than 70,000 lives and the threat of war looms between the two countries. To this day, troops are massed on both sides of the contested border, glowering at one another and waiting for provocation. President Isaiah Safwerki is viewed by many as a liberator for leading his forces to victory over Ethiopia in 1991. He now presides over a single party state which outlaws even the mildest opposition. In the past 17 years no elections have been held in the country and freedom of press has been banned since 2001. As to freedom of movement, exit visas are generally not granted to anyone under 45 years of age, excepting only married women and men unfit for military service. Thus, thousands of young Eritreans risk their lives to sneak across the border to Sudan or pile onto rickety boats headed for Yemen each year. Military service is what matters most in Eritrea. By one account, it has the highest number of troops per capita in the world, with 43 out of 100 people serving as professionals or reservists. The country has only 4 million people. The military obsession exists because of the enmity between Isaias and Ethiopian Prime Minister Meles Zenawi. The two leaders who once cooperated to depose Melis's dictatorial predecessor, Mengistu Haile Mariam. Mengistu led Ethiopia's Derg regime, which was a communist military junta that came to power in Ethiopia from 1974 until 1987. The regime executed and imprisoned tens of thousands of its opponents without trial between 1975 and 1977, a period known as the Red Terror. Eritrea and Ethiopia were again at war from 1998 until 2000 after a disputed border town named Badame. The Boundary Commission subsequently awarded Badame to Eritrea in 2002, but Ethiopia refused to allow the UN officials to implement the decision. Fears of another war persist since both militaries are deployed near the border, while the mutual belligerence of Isaias and Melis has not abated.
If anything, the bite has now been exported to Somalia, where Ethiopia removed the Union of Islamic Courts in late 2006, and Eritrea has sent arms and soldiers. Recently, Eritrea is facing another border conflict with its neighbor Djibouti over a very strategic spot at the mouth of the Red Sea, where both countries claim authority. The disadvantages of the militarized situation for Eritreans are threefold. If war with Ethiopia recurs, then a large portion of its citizens will be at the front lines fighting needless battles. Secondly, barring a change in American foreign policy, Ethiopia is seen as a historically attached U.S. ally, especially since the two nations' militaries are believed to be working hand-in-hand -in, -hand in Somalia. We are very peaceful uh... Uh, country, we don't want war, we don't want to create any crisis in our region and everywhere. So we are, we condemn was terrorism and we don't, we don't, uh, we don't endorse or we don't, uh, we don't agree with uh, what terrorism do. We are against terrorism. So as uh, the Western and the uh, international, international community has to understand the right uh, facts about Eritrea was was going. It's not. It doesn't have to listen only on one side. It has to uh, see on both sides and give the right uh, conclusion and decision. Eritrea, by contrast, is perceived by American diplomats as a potential state sponsor of terrorism. In addition to this, the military situation means Isaias is not paying a political price for his actions since he has eliminated political opposition, civil society, and the free press. Perceived instability has allowed him to engage in tyranny without facing an organized opposition. Seven years ago, after the war with Ethiopia ended, the government imprisoned senior government officials, military commanders, and journalists who advocated for the implementation of the 1997 Constitution. The document guaranteed multi-party politics, elections, and other freedoms. Asked about future election plans in a recent interview with Al Jazeera, the president showed just how confident he is in the status quo. Okay, now let's look at the domestic political situation in Eritrea. When are elections going to be held in Eritrea? The way elections scheduled for 2001, they didn't take place. When is that going to happen? What elections? Elections in Eritrea. We'll see what the elections in the United States will bring about and we will wait for about three, four decades until we see genuine natural situations emerge in Eritrea. You think Eritrea is going to wait three or four decades before it holds elections? Maybe more, maybe more, who knows? But is that of course depending on what you call elections, what you believe in elections, what you think in terms of elections, if you think Elections are uh, elections we have witnessed in Ethiopia, the elections in, ba in Zimbabwe, the elections in uh, Jordan, the elections in Morocco, the elections in Kuwait. If you talk about those elections and the elections in Iraq and the elections in Afghanistan, like the uh, uh, process where the lawyer Jirga was brought about to form a government. If you're talking about these types of elections, I can tell you it may never happen. It may take decades. Well, aren't elections a central element of a democracy? And if you don't have elections, then you don't have a democracy. It depends on, on what you mean by democracy. If you really understand what democracy means, and if you're talking about genuine elections, that's another issue. If you're telling me that uh, the uh, democracy and the elections we have witnessed the last five or ten years, promoted by the United States as a separate agenda, to serve its interests in a number of regions of this world, I can tell you these are not elections for us. 
This is not democracy for us. If you mean democracy is polarizing society vertically, that's not democracy for us. And these days it's become very fashionable for people to talk about democracy when society is divided and polarized along ethnic religious lines and we are not party to that kind of democracy. Yet in spite of all the internal politics and the government disregarding the basic rights of many of its people, Eritreans love their country. Independence is still celebrated with great zeal and you can just ask thousands of revelers who crowd the streets of Asmara, stadiums of Washington DC, and banquet halls of Toronto, Stockholm, or St. Louis, and they'll tell you that decades of struggle have not dimmed their desire for peace and stability in their motherland. Liberty doesn't come easily. To me, today is, you know, you give too much to get freedom. It doesn't come for free, so it costs us so many lives even though we are celebrating the independence of Eritrea. Overall, Eritrea is a nation who is uh, in the verge of uh, coming out of all those bad things, even though we have a problem. But uh, its independence is a landmark for all the Africans who, who try to follow this footstep. I am a proud Eritrean, I'm patriotic, I want everything good. Uh, I have great hope for the future of my country. Uh, I'm sure that everybody feels that way. Every Eritrean that I know uh, has the best interest in their heart for their country. But uh, talking about what's happening back home doesn't really mean that you don't mean well. And uh, that's why I wanted to do this and I wanted to tell things as part of history. So that was the motivation behind this. And I hope now uh, so I hope people learn from this.